Hey guys, what is up people? How are you guys doing? Welcome back to today's session. Once again, hoping that you guys are doing good and taking very good care of yourself. This is going to be the first session of Light, one of my personal favorite chapters. I hope you guys uh, like talking about Light by, uh, because for me, uh, it's one of my favorite chapters. It's my all-time all favorite. So today we'll be talking about spherical mirrors and its component, guys. Let me introduce myself. My name is Aram Manoran, a Master Teacher of Science here at Vedantu. A very warm welcome to all of you guys out there. Once again, hoping that you guys are taking good care of yourself. So people, let us get started as always with the quote. Let us begin with a good positive thought. And the quote for today is this, guys. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Every time I look at this quote, the one thing that comes into my mind is Sachin Tendulkar. Because see, guys, Sachin Tendulkar right now is one of the... I mean, he will forever be one of the greatest player in cricket. Uh, although I am not such a big fan of cricket, I am still a very big fan of Sachin Tendulkar. Now, here's the thing, guys. The first time he picked up the bat, he did not, you know, like he was not great at it. It was not like he was already great. He was born great playing cricket and then he took up his bat and decided to start playing cricket. No, he started one day and he kept at it until he became the greatest player of all time. So guys, all I have to say is this. No matter what your goal is, you don't really have to be the greatest or be the best at it. Start somewhere. Because at the end of the day, everyone, me, anyone for that matter, take any example for that matter, we've all started at one point and then we finally got to where we are right now. Alright guys, so all the best for that. With that said, let us get into today's topic. So people, this, these are the topics that we'll be looking at in this particular chapter. Spherical mirrors and its components, focus, uh, incident ray, uh, con concave and convex mirrors, ray diagram of concave and con convex mirrors, sign convention of mirrors, numericals on spherical mirrors, magnification of mir spherical mirrors, refraction, laws of refraction, refractive index, lenses, focus of lenses, incident ray of lenses, uh, concave and convex lenses, sign Condition of lenses, lens form line, numericals, and magnification of lenses as well. So, without any further delay, guys, let us get into today's topic, which is nothing but spherical mirrors. First thing, guys, we have to understand this that spherical mirrors have a wide variety of application. Now, on a daily basis, you look at yourself on the mirror, and which is actually a plane mirror. We call that as a plane mirror because it has a plane surface. A spherical mirror, on the other hand, has a curved surface it does not have a straight surface it rather has a curved surface now the applications of it can vary from your side view mirrors to your mirrors that is used by dentists a lot of places like this we actually use spherical mirrors so let's understand the physics behind it what exactly is a spherical mirror and what are the nomenclature that you have to be aware of when you're dealing with one first thing guys a spherical mirror is a part of a glass sphere so imagine a glass sphere a glass sphere, a part of that. So if I were to divide us or take a small part of it, that is what is called as a spherical mirror. So that is what makes a spherical mirror. Uh, it's a it's just a part of a glass sphere. So when you cut a part of it, you can clearly see that there is one part which is curved inwards, and there is there's another part which is curved outwards. So there's an inner surface which is curved on the inner side and there's another one which is curved towards the outer side but when you look at it can you still call this as a mirror because i told you that imagine a glass sphere and glass you guys already know is a transparent object so how do you convert something like that into a mirror very simple guys all you have to do is silver coat the other side so let's say that I silver coat the outer side of the mirror. Then my inner side of the sphere, the mirror, which is which was curved inwards, that would become my reflecting surface. Let's say that I curve the inner side of the uh, I, I silver coat the inner side of the mirror. Then my outer side would be the reflecting surface. So which means that light would fall on the surface and get reflected back. So whichever side I'm going to silver, the opposite side of that would be the reflective surface as simple as that now here's the catch guys both of these mirrors actually have different properties look at this image guys very simple here's one where the coating the silver coating is done on the inside so the reflecting surface is towards the outside and here's another one where the reflecting surface is towards the inside so the coating was done on the outside 
Look at the image. Both of them have the candle in place in front of it. It's the exact same candle, the same color also. Maybe it would have been burnt a little in the second case. But still, look at that image. One of them looks straight. It looks erect. The other one looks inverted. So basically, there should be some difference. And that is why there are two different images being uh, caught. So what is the property of the mirror that leads to that formation that will be leading a uh, lot will be understanding later on for now guys understand this that the mirror in which the reflecting surface is towards the inside or the reflecting surface is curved inwards that is called as a concave mirror caving inside that is the reflecting surface the reflecting surface is curved inwards that is called as a concave mirror on the other hand when the reflecting surface is curved outside or outwards, that is called as a convex mirror. So reflecting surface to curved inwards is called as a concave mirror. The reflecting surface curved outwards is called as a convex mirror. Now that you've understood this case, let's talk about what are the nomenclature that you have to be aware of when you're dealing with a very simple spherical mirror. What are the components of spherical mirrors? So first one is the center of curvature, the radius of curvature, aperture, the pole, as well as the principal axis. Let's start with the first one. Let's go one by one, the center of curvature. I told you this, that the spherical mirror is basically a part of a, a bigger glass sphere. The center, the geometric center of that glass sphere is the center of curvature, as simple as that. Whatever is the center of the sphere, that is basically the center of curvature of that particular spherical mirror. The center of sphere from which the mirror is taken out is nothing but the center of curvature. Now to talk about what is the radius of curvature. What is the distance, whatever is the distance from the center of curvature to any point on that particular spherical surface, that is what is called as the, the radius of curvature, which basically is nothing but the radius of the sphere itself, which is denoted as capital R. So the radius of curvature is nothing but what? If I take any point on that particular mirror and join the line from that particular point to the center of curvature, that is nothing but the radius of that particular sphere, which is given the term radius of curvature. Simple as that. The third point that you have to, the third nomenclature that you have to be aware of is nothing but the aperture of the mirror. What is the aperture of the mirror is nothing but the surface area of the mirror where the reflection can happen. Whatever is the entire reflecting surface, the surface area. So the entire surface, the entire surface where the reflection can happen or where it is capable of reflecting, that is what is called as the aperture of a mirror. So whatever is the reflect, the entire surface area of the reflecting surface is called as the aperture of the mirror. The fourth term that you have to be aware of is nothing but the pole of the mirror. The pole of the mirror is nothing but the center of the, the spherical mirror. The center or the midpoint or the center of the spherical mirror. The midpoint, you can say that's more uh, accurate. So the midpoint of the spherical mirror, that is called as the pole of the spherical mirror. And finally, but definitely not the least, is nothing but the principal axis. Principal axis is nothing but an imaginary line which basically joins the center of curvature and the pole of the mirror. It basically passes through the pole and the center of curvature. That line that joins them both is what is called as the principal axis, where the focus of the mirror would also lie. We'll understand about focus and everything in the sessions ahead. So that, my friends, is the different components of a spherical mirror. So basically, guys, all in all, this is what it would look like. So for, ex for example, if you talk about a concave mirror, this is what is a concave mirror where the reflecting surface is towards the inside. The radius, you see this, this is the radius of uh, curvature. This is the center of curvature. This is the pole and that straight line passing through it is nothing but the principal axis. For a concave mirror, the reflecting surface is towards the outside. You see that the radius of curvature is lying behind the reflecting surface and this is the uh, the center of curvature and that straight line passing through it is nothing but the principal axis. As simple as that. All right, guys, now that you've understood all these concepts, guys, I have a surprise for you people. So let's look at that surprise and then we'll also solve some questions as well. I'm pretty sure that you would definitely find this definitely helpful, guys. So let's take a minute and, uh, you know, just give me a small, just give me one or two minutes of your time and then we'll get back into the topic. So here's the thing, guys. We've done a survey 
uh, and asked what are the problems that you guys are facing especially during this pandemic time you guys i'm pretty sure that uh, you know have, have been facing a lot of problems lately especially students uh, you know who are giving their going to give their boards and uh, you know board exams and stuff you guys are very tensed about what your future lies and i'm pretty sure that you have you've been facing a lot of problems tons and tons more problems since the lockdown has started and you still are facing every single day so some of the problems that you guys came up with was doubts so my doubts are not getting cleared the next problem was sir my notes how do i get notes the next problem was sir test and assignment how do i practice uh, these different questions how do i uh, prepare myself for the exams then you had competitive exams so sir i really want to give my you know ntsc exams kvvi exams or nso exams but how do i prepare myself for it and then a choice of your own schedule that is another bigger problem because sometimes you're free but the teacher is not uh, free at that time and when the teacher is free you are not free and finally guys choice of your own language how do i learn in a language that i'm comfortable with at vedantu guys we have solved all these problems let me just tell you how we have solved it doubts inside the class you not just have one teacher but rather you'll have two teachers you'll have a master teacher who will be teaching the concepts and you'll also have a class teacher to help you clear your doubts so you get personalized attention making sure that your doubts are cleared inside the class itself you don't have to wait for 24 hours or 48 hours and you know get your doubt cleared after that you can get it cleared inside the class itself you get notes of each and every sessions you get recordings of each and every sessions so if in case you miss out a class you can always watch the recording n number of times you want and you know watch it uh, and you know make yourself aware of what happened in the last session you have regular tests and assignments to check where you are uh, going wrong and based on these tests and assignments you'll also be getting a personalized report card as well which would give you an idea of where you're going wrong what are the things that you should do and what are the ways that you can uh, what are the topics that you're weak at all of that detailed report you'll be getting that as well and you'll also be trained for all the competitive exams any kind of competitive exams that you guys are planning to take up we'll be helping you out with that as well and you can choose your own schedule whatever choose whatever time because the classes are going on 24 to 7 whenever you feel like studying you can choose that time and study you don't have to come to the teacher's choice you can choose your own schedule and uh, you know study in that time and choice of your own language at the moment we are offering classes in hindi as well as in english but yes guys in the future we'll be adding up more languages but for now it's in hindi and english and i'm pretty sure the entire country is divided like that A majority of them understand english as well as hindi so that's how we are going about it so here's the thing is what you have to do is very simple apart from yeah by, by the way apart from all of these you'll also be getting crash courses and micro courses like i told you, you get personalized attention and performance report card as well and you can attend how many of the live classes you want you want to attend 20 classes in a day go ahead do it nobody's ever going to stop you it's just that whether you can sit in front of the computer for 20 hours or not it's all you who is going to set the limit so here's the thing is what you have to do is very simple do, visit this website vdnt.in/ytpro as soon as you click on this website as soon as you enter this link this is what you're going to see let me just take you through that so once you click on it you'll see uh, this grade selection so we have to choose which grade are you in so at the moment we are offering from 1 to 12th grade let's say that you are someone in 10th grade so once you click on it they'll ask you which board are you in are you in cbc board icc board or maharashtra board for now we are offering only these three boards but later on we'll be adding more to that as well so let's say that you are in cbc board right once you click on it this is what you're going to get what and all i just told you everything in one glance you can pause the video and read it if you want to so what you have to do is basically this guys you have to click on get subscription once you click on get subscription this is what you're going to get you're going to get one month three month and six month let me just take you through a little this the base price let's say that you want to try out for one month course all right so 30 days you want to try out so the base price of that is 4000 rupees you get a primary discount on that making the price to be 2699 rupees but on top of that if you use the coupon code akpro you will get another additional 400 rupees discount making the price to be 2294 rupees all right let's say that you want to try out the three month course the base price is 10000 rupees but you get a primary discount and you'll get the price down to 2999 6999 rupees essentially giving you a discount of 3000 rupees and if you use the coupon code ak pro on top of that you'll get another 1049 rupees discount we are essentially paying 5949 rupees let's say you want to try for the 6 month course for the 6 month course the uh, base price is 11000 rupees you get a primary discount which brings it down to 11499 rupees 
and if you use the coupon code AKPRO on top of that, you'll be paying 9,774 rupees. Do check out the link. Let me know what you think about it. Uh, and, uh, you know, let's see. I, I hope to see you guys in the regular sessions as well. With that said, guys, let us now visit uh, the, the questions uh, as well. So what you have to do is this, guys. Remember the website name, vdnt.in slash ytpro and the coupon code. Do not forget the coupon code AKPRO to avoid that discount as well. So with that said, let us get into some questions and answers. Now, again, guys, I want you guys to let me know what is the answer in the comment section below. Let me know how was the session and also what was the answer for each and every of these questions as well. So here's the first question, guys. If the inner curve of a spherical mirror is silvered, then it is a concave mirror, convex mirror, plane mirror, or you can't see. If the inner surface of the spherical mirror is silvered, then what is the mirror that you get? So basically, guys, if the inner surface is silvered, then what is the kind of mirror that you have? It is nothing but a con convex mirror simple case it's nothing but a convex mirror because the inner surface is silvered the outer surface is the one which will be acting as a reflecting surface so it'll be a convex mirror very simple question second question the center of a sphere of which the reflecting surface of a spherical mirror is a part of is called as the center of curvature the radius of curvature aperture of the pole the center of the sphere of which is a reflecting surface is a part of of the spherical mirror is a part of what is that called as very simple answer guys in the comment section but the answer to this question is guys the center of curvature the center of the sphere of which the mirror is a part of is what is called as the center of curvature very simple third question guys here we go in the case of a concave mirror center of curvature lies in the dash of the reflective surface is it in the boundary behind in front or none of these in the case of a concave concave mirror which means concave mirror where is the center of curvature it would lie in front of the mirror so basically the right answer guys would be option number c which is nothing but in front of the mirror as simple as that last question please guys let's take a look at this one midpoint of the aperture of the mirror is called as what boundary pole center of curvature or the principal axis what is the midpoint of the aperture of the mirror called as the pole people it is called as the pole very very simple question with that said guys here is your homework for today let me know what is the answer in the comment section below again here's a question straight line passing through the center of curvature and pole is called as what what is the straight line passing through the center of curvature as well as the pole called as let me know what is the answer in the comment section below once again guys i hope you enjoyed today's session leave a like subscribe to the channel be a part of the squad and uh, take care of yourself stay safe until the next time we take care of yourself guys this is anup signing off for the night bye bye take care